Hi, this is Dom from MyRise. In this video, I'm going to delve a little bit deeper into using ViewStacks. I'm going to run you through some examples of how you can use conditional logic and variables to control ViewStacks. So in the introduction to views video that you may have watched before this one, I showed you how to set up actions to change views. Things like clicking on a text widget or a button to change a view, like you see here. The first thing I want to show you in this video is how you can use form elements along with conditions to control view stacks. As a base for the examples, I'm going to use this prototype that you may have seen in our recent webinar. It uses a scenario of setting up two-factor authentication and having a user choose either to use their phone or a token as the authentication type. So let's get started. So for this first example, I've dropped a select box on the page. And then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and name that form widget. And this is so that later on we can easily find it when we're choosing the condition. So you see here I've named it choose type select box. And if we look at its settings, we'll see that I've already named the first option to phone. And now I'm going to add the second option and we'll call that token. And now we want to add the conditions. So first we'll select the view. And if you look down at the bottom here, we're going to click this right arrow. And what this will do is pop up the rules window. Now, if we look at the rules drop down, we'll see that it automatically populates with all the input widgets on this page. And this is why it's so helpful that we name all our widgets. In this case, we'll pick the choose type select box. And then we'll use equals here, but you've got all the standard operators to pick from. And then we'll use phone and token to drive these rules. So if the user selects phone, it's going to show us the first view. And if they select token, it's going to show us the second. And that's it. And if we simulate this page and test it out, we'll see that changing the select box condition does indeed drive the view below it. So now I want to do a really quick run through of some of the other form elements and get you familiar with those. On this page here, I've used a text input to drive the view. And you'll see here that the rules are very similar. So when they type in one of these words, either phone or token, it's going to drive the view. Here I wanted to show you an example of a radio button so I could point out a few things. Now with radio buttons, if you want them to work in unison, you need to make them part of the same set. And the way you do that here is in the settings. You can see here that I set both of these using the word type. And then what you need to do is you need to set the value of each radio button. So you'll see here for the first radio button, I've already changed that to phone. And now we'll change the second to token. And now when we go to set the rules, you'll see that the radio button set that we created is there in the dropdown. Lastly, on the form elements, I'll show you a checkbox. In this case, I'm using it to control which language is displayed as an example. The important note here is that when you're setting the conditions, zero stands for unchecked and one stands for checked. Now in a recent webinar, we used a similar scenario to the one we've been using here in this video. But we also showed how you can set and use variables in this process. What setting variables in iRise allows you to do is to store data that you can then use to drive and control the type of conditional logic that we've been prototyping in this video. So let's use the same scenario of choosing either the phone or the token view on this page. But let's step back one page in the process. So here we have this nicely designed page. And what we want to do is we want to have the user choose their preference. And when they do, we want to capture that click and set it as a variable. And then we're going to use that variable to control the view on the next page. So let's go ahead and add an action to each of these images. We'll choose a click event. And then we'll scroll down to the data related actions. And in this case, we're going to select set variable. In the next step, you're going to be shown a list of all the variables that already exist in the project. But what we want to do is create a new variable Let's call that auth type. And then we need to add the value that's going to be set when the user clicks that image. So here, when the user clicks the iPhone image, we want to set the auth type variable to phone. And then we'll do the exact same thing for the token image. And when we get to setting the value, we'll of course set that to token. So the last thing we want to do on this page is we want to add to this action sequence. And we want to go ahead and add a navigation action so that when the user clicks the image, they not only save the variable, but then they navigate to the next page. So this page is all set, and now we want to jump to the next page. Let's bring up the rules. And for the first view, instead of choosing an input widget like we did in all the earlier examples, we're going to go ahead and choose a variable. 
So of course we're going to choose the variable auth type that we created earlier. And the rest of the process is just the same as all the other examples. If the user clicked on the phone image and then set the variable to phone, we want to show that first view. And if they clicked on the token image, then we want to show them the token view. So let's simulate this and test it out and see if it indeed works. So the variable is being set and the view was changing correctly. So hopefully this gives you a deeper understanding of how you can use views along with conditional logic to build some really true to life functionality. Thanks for watching and take care.